Inshallah, wam, inshallah, wam. Want to get ready to bring it out. Yeah, I've never seen these videos get shadow banned as much as they, they're being shadow banned today. And videos taken down. This man is the devil. Shalom. Ya pa. Ayyashallah. Yahawla. Shalom, beloved. Amelia Tribe of Issachar. Brother Amana Kadash the Bar. Shalom. Rakta. Gonna bring it up. Yeah, I was saying, I've never seen these videos get messed with as bad as they're all they're getting messed with today. I'm gonna keep it moving though. I'm gonna keep rolling. There was a um, news report of a former NFAC member claiming to be a son of Yah an Israelite that shot a police officer in uh, Florida. So it's very suspect when the Israelites are waking up in mass number around the world and all of a sudden are being demonized as domestic terrorists. No different from the New Jersey shooting. All we have are Bibles in our hands. That's it, Bibles. And now they're demonizing the children of the Lord. <clears throat> We're gonna go ahead and bring it out. Let's keep going. But the biggest terrorists are those that are in power right now. Those are the terrorists. Okay, we're gonna go to Second Address chapter six. Second Edris, chapter six. Verse 22. And suddenly show the sown places. Let's go ahead and give honors first. Rock the Yahawa, Rock the Yahawa Shai. Call Halayim La, Yahawa. Bashem, Yahawa Shai. Bashem, Rakakadash. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hope of the elect that are scattered abroad, and double honors and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. I'm going to go ahead and bring it out. Truth shall prevail. Truth shall prevail. Let's go to 2nd Edges, chapter 6. Verse 22. And suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown. The full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. And that's what's happening right now. A famine is underway. Food shortages. There's been reports on shortages of beef, shortages in chicken, grain shortages. So this place is being devastated by curses. And that's being done through the spirit of the Lord. Water shortages are going to ensue shortly. So we're seeing these storehouses being empty. We're seeing inflation where the cost of goods is going up. And there's over circulation of money or dollars in the system. That's going to lead to hyperinflation. Second Ezra 6, verse 22. And suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown. The full storehouses shall be suddenly found empty. 
and the trumpet shall give a sound which when every man heareth, they shall be suddenly afraid. At that time shall friends fight one against another like enemies, and the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein. The springs of the fountains shall stand still, and in three hours they shall not run. That's neighbor against neighbor, city against city, insurrections against government authorities. And what's going to lead to this? Social economic collapse, food and water shortages, lockdowns, martial law, quarantines, freedom of movement restrictions, police and military checkpoints. So everything is going to lead to a total cataclysmic event, massive destruction. <clears throat> Let's go back to that, verse 24. <clears throat> At that time shall friends fight one against another like enemies, and the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein. The springs of the fountains shall, shall stand still and in three hours they shall not run. Whosoever remaineth from all these that I have told these shall escape. Let's read that again. The Most High is going to preserve a remnant of the elect of the house of Israel. That's who he's going to preserve. That are going to be saved from the race riots. That are going to be saved from martial law civil disturbance, Armageddon, or the Third World War that's going to be saved from the infighting. Let's read it again. Second Ezra 6, verse 26. Go to verse 25. Whosoever remaineth from all these that I have told thee shall escape and see my salvation and the end of your world. Well, what is that end of the world? That's talking about the end of an age, <coughs> the end of an eon of these Edomites rulership. So they understand that their time is short. That's why they're speeding up false flag events, pandemics, all the stuff is planned chaos, pandemics false flags, demonizing citizens, calling them domestic terrorists. So this is all a buildup, a buildup of an end of an age or Armageddon. So it's going to lead to the final world war, the third world war, Armageddon, which is Hard Magadwan, Mountain of Troops. So this man knows that his time is short. So now he's demonizing the Israelites, calling us terrorists, or reading the Bible, prophesying, because we're waking up in mass number and great fear is falling upon those that see us. Let's go ahead and get that. Let's go to Revelation. Let's go to Revelation 11. Verse 8. Let's go to verse 7. The book of Revelations, chapter 11. Matter of fact, they said that a, a so called black man charged a police checkpoint in Washington, D.C. with a knife. Are you kidding me? And they said he became radical or radicalized from, from reading the Bible reading revelations. Come on, man. And they charge a police checkpoint with a knife. Well, this man is starting to demonize the children of the Lord for waking up to our nationality and our heritage. Ain't no man gonna charge no damn 
police checkpoint with a knife. Are you out of your goddamn mind? So they're making up lies. Because we're waking up. And we are the children of Israel. And the people over in the land today are imposters. Let's read about that great fear. <clears throat> Revelations 11, verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So we're living in a place that's spiritual Sodom and Egypt. All types of abominations, child pedophilia, molestation. You can just register as a sex offender and move into a community. That is absolute wickedness. Just because you're registered as a child sex offender, you can go and move into a community. But everything under Esau, Edom is wicked. This man is not a righteous man. So they are Romans, Edomites, and they're pushing all types of abominations. They're working on surgery where a man can get a reproductive uterus through surgery. So this man is the wicked. Esau, Edom, the Edomites, the Romans. What are these dead bodies? That's the Israelites being cut off from our nationality, our heritage, not knowing who we are, and being cut off from the truth. That's what it's talking about. So walking dead, so to speak. Revelations 11, verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So our Lord was crucified because we were given a false image. From the Renaissance, all the dark images were whitewashed. So this is how our Lord was crucified. We was given Cesare Borgia, or Cesare Borgia. So this is how our Lord was crucified. And this was created by Michael, Michelangelo during the Renaissance, where the Romans would come back into power around 1453. And they would begin to whitewash all of the original images from the Dark Ages. So this place is Sodom. Sodom means burn, to burn, as in lust, to burn in lust. And it's also Egypt. What is Egypt? Egypt means bondage, oppression. Let's see what that Egypt is. Let's go to uh, Exodus 13, verse 3. The book of Exodus chapter 13, verse 3. And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which ye came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For by strength of hand the Lord brought you out from this place. There shall no leavened bread be eaten. So Egypt means the house of bondage. And the Israelites were sold <clears throat> with ships into the house of bondage. Let's get that. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there he shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you sold into the place of bondage, captivity, oppression. That's America, modern Egypt, modern Babylon, modern Canaan, modern Assyria. Let's go back to Revelation 11, verse 8. And this is modern Sodom and Gomorrah. So it's a mixture or melting pot of all the ancient kingdoms rolled into one 
This is the wickedest place on the planet. Revelations 11, verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. That's why the Bible calls the daughter of Babylon the great whore, because this place is mixed with spiritual fornication, idolatry, worshiping other gods, witchcraft. Revelation 11, verse 9. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. When the Israelites came over here, after about 350 years, the tribe of Judah woke up in one west in New York. So if we were not given closure on our nationality, identity, our heritage. We were not told that we were the children of Israel. So we were not suffered to be put in graves or given closure. That's what it's talking about. These other nations, they know who we are. But they kept it secret and they made merchandise of us, profit, by setting up businesses in our neighborhoods also selling the Israelites as slaves. So where's this people, kindreds and tongues? That's talking about the great melting pot, America. And we were also sold in the international slave market, the children of Israel. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. For the two prophets, northern kingdom Israel and southern kingdom Judah, are tormenting the other nations with words of Bible prophecy. And they also sent us as gifts during the sub-Saharan slave trade, the North Atlantic slave trade. So all these nations benefited off of the fall of Jerusalem. And so they made merchandise of us. Go to Revelations 18 and 3. Let's prove that. Revelations 18, verse 3. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. All these nations, mainly America, benefited off of the slavery of the children of Israel being sold in the international global slave trade. Let's go back to Revelation 11, verse 10. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them we're going to see these false flags increase we're going to see more planned chaotic events more planned chaos more pandemics we're going to see the ushering in of medical martial law everything reverts back that the Israelites are making up. So we're going to see more planned events, planned demons. So we're seeing the byproducts or the symptoms of great fear. 
Revelation 11, verse 3. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. And they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. So the Israelites are waking up around the world. You're seeing your teachers. You're seeing your prophets. You're seeing your teachers. The children of Israel, the sons of Jacob. You're seeing your up and coming kings and priests. Thine eyes shall see thy teachers. So you're seeing who the true prophets are. It's not ancient Kemet. It's not Islam. It's not the Quran. It's not Buddhism. It's not Confucianism. It's not Hinduism. You're seeing the sons of Jacob bring forth words of prophecy. Your eyes shall see your teachers. Let's get that. Let's go to Isaiah 30. Isaiah 30, verse 20. But we're in the last days. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 20. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers, and thy ear shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it, when ye turn to the right hand, and when ye turn to the left. So you're seeing the true prophets in these last days stand upon our feet, and great fear is falling upon those that are witnessing this. So the children of Israel were sold into slavery into all nations. Let's read that again, Isaiah 30. Let's go to verse 19. For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. Thou shalt weep no more. Say what? Thou shalt weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. When he shall hear it, he will answer thee. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. But thine eye shall see thy teachers, and thine ear shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it, when ye turn to the right hand, and when ye turn to the left. For we're showing you the words of truth. This is the way, walk ye in it. Come back to this Bible. Stop worshiping the fake white man Jebus. Return back unto this pure doctrine of truth. Yahweh Shai means he will deliver. Savior or deliverer. That's our true deliverer. Not Renaissance art. This is the devil. That's the devil. Esau Edom. Renaissance art. Well, that's talking about them coming into power. Let's go to Revelations 20. I'm going to go to Revelations chapter 20. How did we get that Renaissance art? book of Revelations chapter 20 verse 1 and I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand this angel is our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai that bottomless pit is Europe they have to go and colonize and rape rob murder and steal and kill to get resources that is a bottomless pit in Europe. So the key represents rulership, the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom. That key represents the kingdom of rulership. The 
the chain represents slavery. So these Edomites were in slavery in Europe for a thousand years. It was called the medieval time or the dark ages. Let's read it again. Revelations chapter 20, verse one. And I saw an angel come down from heaven having a key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Yahweh Shai can give the kingdom that key to whosoever he wants. And he can put in chains whoever he wants. Right now, the Israelites are in captivity and these Edomites are in rulership. So they have the key right now to the kingdom of rulership. See, the wisdom of Timon. That's the keys to rulership. And that bottomless pit is Europe. Verse 2. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. See, so study the Byzantine Empire. When the Israelites, the dark rulers of Europe, ruled Europe for a thousand years. And these Edomites were in chains. They were slaves in the Dark Ages. That's why they don't like to talk about the Dark Ages. Where they were being ruled over by the sons of Jacob. This dragon, this kingdom of Edom, was bound a thousand years in chains. That means they were in servitude. Servants and handmaids. Brick masons. Vine dressers. Nursing mothers. Let's read it again. So Yahweh Shai has the key to who is going to rule and who is not. And he also has the chains of who's going to serve. Right now, Jacob, the sons of Jacob, are in servitude. Revelations 20, verse 2. And, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Devil comes from the Greek, diablos, which means deceiver, slanderer, or false accuser. Satan. Satan comes from the Hebrew, shaitan, which means human adversary. Who is that? It's talking about the Edomites, their kingdom of rulership, their domain, their power. And that serpent in the garden is their forefather. He was dark skinned in those days, though. That old serpent from the garden. That's the forefather of the Edomites, the serpent seed. Revelations 20, verse 3. And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. So they begin to come into power in the 1300s, and they begin to solidify that power and establish a stronghold around 1453 and we saw the fall of Istanbul Constantinople that was the fall of the Byzantine Empire the fall of the dark rulers of Europe so that city in the ancient world was called Constantinople modern times it's called Istanbul in Turkey so they eventually took down the Israelites but that fall when they when they fell out of power it was around 300 AD the western portion of the Roman Empire is what failed first let's go back to Revelations 20 so we're in that little season why you think it says, matter of fact, let's go to Revelations 12. That little, that little season 
is from the Renaissance 1453 unto now, but that started in the 1300s. That's why the Bible says that he has a short time. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2. So this is a little season, approximately six, 600 years or so. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon. See, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 2. For we are born at all adventure, and we shall be hereafter as though we had never been. For the breath in our nostrils is as smoke and a little spark in the moving of our heart. Which being extinguished, our body shall be turned into ashes and our spirit shall vanish as the soft air. And our name shall be forgotten in time and no man shall have our works in remembrance and our life shall pass away as the trace of a cloud and shall be dispersed as a mist that is driven away with the beams of the sun and overcome with the heat thereof. For our time is a very shadow that passeth away, and after our end there is no returning, for it is fast sealed, so that no man cometh again. So they have a short time to rule. They are loose for a little season. And they're going to quickly fade away and go into captivity, slavery. Let's go to Revelation 12, verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So this is talking about the Edomites. Their reign, their dominion, their rulership. So they were loose a little season, starting as early as the 1300s. And they would solidify their kingdom under the Renaissance. Renaissance means rebirth around 1453 so now they've been in rulership starting as early as the 1300s up into the present time that's why second Ezra 6 let's go ahead and read it second Ezra 6 and 9 a book of second Ezra chapter 6 verse 9 for Esau is the end of the world let's go to verse 8 2nd chapter 6 verse 8 and he said unto me from Abraham unto Isaac when Jacob and Esau were born of him Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau for Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed so Esau Edom is the great red dragon a global empire Romans. So Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow. So their time is soon to pass away. So they have a short time. Let's read it again. Wisdom of Solomon 2, verse 5. For our time is a very shadow that passeth away. For our time is a very shadow that passeth away, and after our end there is no returning, for it is fast sealed, so that no man cometh again. So they only have a short time. Let's go back to Revelation 20. The book of Revelation, chapter 20. Verse 3, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years 
should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loose a little season. So after a thousand years of the so-called Dark Ages, the so-called medieval time, the Edomites were loose. And they established that stronghold around 1453. They begin to come into power in the 1300s. So they have a little season to rule in wickedness. Let's, let's go from there to Job 20. Let's go to the book of Job chapter 20. Book of Job, chapter 20, verse 4. Knowing thou not this of old, since man was placed upon earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment. See that? So Satan knoweth that he has a short time. So expect more flag events, pandemics, lockdowns medical martial law let's read it again Job 20 verse 4 knowing knowest thou not this of old since men was placed upon earth that the triumphing of the wicked is short and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment that hypocrite, when you look up the word, it means actor or actress. These Edomites are actors. Everything this man does is a lie. Everything. Giving us a false Messiah. Calling themselves the children of Israel. Calling themselves the Jews. Once they came out of the caves, they began to steal everybody's land. They colonized India. They colonized Bangladesh. They colonized the Middle East, Lebanon, Iraq, Iran. They colonized Australia. They colonized New Zealand, New Guinea, the Holy Land, Israel, North America, Central America, South America. They colonized South Africa, all of Africa. So the triumphing of the wicked is short. So the seeds of the evil roots of the wicked have been planted for a short time but harvest is coming in and the weeds are going to be rooted up and cast into the fire along with the tares Job 20 verse 4 knowest thou not this of old since man was placed upon earth that the triumphing of the wicked is short and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment Though his excellency mount up to the heavens and his head reach unto the clouds, yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. They which have seen him shall say, Where is he? Well, this man is going to be flushed down the toilet like the piece of shit that he is. That's what dung is. Dung is poop. Shit, that's what dung is. This man is going to be flushed down the drain. And they which see him shall say, Where is this devil? Where is this piece of dog doo-doo that makes up lies, false propaganda? Let's read it again. Job 20, verse 4. Knowest thou not this of old, since men was placed upon earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment see so that hypocrite means an actor or actress they are liars Job 20 verse 6 though his excellency shall mount up to the heavens and his head shall reach unto the clouds that's their rulership also their space exploration program Space travel, flight, international flight, airlines, air travel. Most importantly, rulership. Job 20, 
verse 6. Though his excellency mount up to the heavens and his head reach unto the clouds, yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. They which have seen him shall say, Where is he? He shall fly away as a dream and shall not be found. Yea, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. The eye also which saw him shall see him no more, neither shall his place any more behold him. Well, this man is going to be chased out of the world. Esau, Edom, Romans, Edomites, the seed of the wicked. Second 6 and 9 says, Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. So the devil is the end of the world and Jacob, the sons of the righteous, the sons of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, up and coming kings and priests are going to inherit the thrones of the kingdom of rulership. Let's go to second Ephesus chapter four. So evil has been sown. The seeds of the wicked, the Edomites, have been planted into rulership, given the keys from Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. Let's go to Second Ephesus four. The book of Second Ephesus chapter four. Second Ephesus chapter four. Verse 26, then answered he me and said, the more thou searchest, the more thou shalt marvel, for the world hasteth fast to pass away. See that? That's why the Bible says Satan knoweth that he has a short time. Or the devil. Devil means deceiver. It's not talking about a man wearing red spandex and a damn pitchfork. Devil means deceiver slanderer or false accuser it's not talking about no damn edomite wearing spandex are you crazy let's read it again second Ezra chapter 4 verse 26 then answered he me and said the more thou searchest the more thou shall marvel for the world hasteth fast to pass away old men sleazy eat is going to pass away he is the rich man in the rich man poor man parable Lazarus are the sons of Jacob Lazarus mean God will help us in Hebrew so we are at the bottom right now then answered he me and said the more thou searchest the more thou shall marvel for the world hastes the fast to pass away and cannot comprehend the things that are promised to the righteous in time to come for this world is full of unrighteousness and infirmities for this world is sick from head to toe witchcraft pedophilia feminism woman over the man the women's liberation movement now the men are being taken out of the household the women or single parent homes are trying to raise children on their own. So it is a collapse of the basic building blocks or the fundamental building structures of a society. The family units are being destroyed on purpose to fill and fund a multi-billion dollar private prison enterprise. These prisons are private corporate industries. So they promote immorality. They promote wickedness. They promote abominations to feed in to a merchandise system that's been merchandised. So they create the problem and bring the solution. Well, let's build more prisons. No, goddammit, let's get more moral. Let's come back to this Bible. We don't have to build more prisons if we focus on building pillars of wisdom coming to this truth repented and being cleansed up and washed by the word don't 
try to focus on the symptoms. We need to cure the problem. And the problem is that this society promotes wickedness, sickness. Second Ezra chapter 4, verse 27. And cannot comprehend the things that are promised to the righteous in time to come. For this world is full of unrighteousness and infirmities. But as concerning the things whereof thou askest me, I will tell thee. For the evil is sown, but the destruction thereof is not yet come. If therefore that which is sown be not turned upside down, and if the place where the evil is sown pass not away, then can it not come that is sown with good. So old man sleazy E must pass away. The wicked or the sons of the evil serpent the serpent seed, the Edomites. Their kingdom has to be turned upside down. That means they have to fall. We cannot get a righteous kingdom unless the unrighteous kingdom pass away. Old man Sleazy E has to pass away. His wickedness, his false laws, his abominations. Let's prove that. Go to 2 Peter 3. So a righteous kingdom, what happens when a, a farmer is irrigating his, his field? What, he, what does he do? He burned up all the weeds and all the roots and all the insects that are eating the crop. He sets the entire farm on fire and cleanses it. That's what's going to happen to the daughter of Babylon, America. And old man Sleazy E is going to be burned from off the face of the earth. Let's go to 2 Peter. Everything comes out of this man's mouth is a lie. How do you know when the Edomite is lying? When his lips are moving. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 3. book of 2nd Peter chapter 3 verse 8 let's go to verse 7 2nd Peter 3 verse 7 but the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men so this world this kingdom of worship, this age is going to pass away with fire. So the earth is going to be cleansed with fire. The Most High is the great planter. He is the farmer, the husbandman, which means planter. So he's going to irrigate his garden. He's got to burn out the old garden first, burn out the impurities, burn up the roots and weeds and twigs and tares. That's what this is going into. And then he's going to plant his garden. That's the kingdom of heaven. Like the ancient world, Eden. But this garden is going to be better. Bigger and better. But first he's got to burn out the impurities and the wicked, the roots. Second Peter 3, verse 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. So these Edomites have only ruled for about a half a day. For about 600 years, when you when you go and do the math, actually closer to seven, and that's that's significant, is that seven represents completion. So they've been in rulership close to 700 years since the Renaissance or rebirth, rebirth of what Edomite supremacy. 
if you start counting going into the 1300s when they begin to come in power. So this devil has only been in rulership for half a day until according to the Lord. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 8 <clears throat> Who is the beloved? The elect of Israel are the beloved. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 8 but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us work, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Only the elect of Israel are going to repent. That's it. That's who that all is talking about. We just read it in verse 8. The beloved is the elect of Israel. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9 again. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, <coughs> but is long suffering to us work, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. So this old kingdom under the wicked is going to pass away with a great noise roasted cave beasts and wicked two-thirds wicked two-third Israelites roasted cave beasts along with roasted dogs on the other nations that are following this devil second Peter 3 verse 10 again but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Godly, holy conversation is speaking the words of these scriptures. That's a godly, holy conversation. Speaking the words coming out of this book. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the God. Let's go to 2 Peter verse 12. 2 Peter 3 verse 12. So we ought to be looking forward to the kingdom of heaven. A righteous kingdom. Not trying to plant ourselves in a wicked kingdom under Edom. So we ought to be looking for their destruction. That's why we say abide babal. Destruction to Babylon and hastening the return of our Lord and Savior. 2 Peter 3, verse 12. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. So the new kingdom under Jacob is going to be built in order. Righteousness ordered by the word. Our steps are going to be ordered by the word. Why you think we say order my steps by your word? No more brokebacks. No more pimps and simps. 
No more Jezebels. No more witches. No more pedophiles. No more witchcraft. Drinking adrenochrome. Children's blood that have been terrified. Rape. Murder. All this wickedness is going to be put down. No more women walking around acting like men. No more men walking around acting very effeminate. With broke backs and no neck, no neck bone. All jacked up. All that's going to be put down. Let's read it again. 2 Peter 3, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Well, this place is going to be dissolved by thermonuclear destruction, which is going to be preceded or start with nuclear missiles. Armageddon, the Third World War, followed by the chariots of the Lord, the chariots of fire, the so-called UFOs. Why you think the Pentagon recently declassified the UFO reports? These are chariots of the Lord that are gonna come with fire. That's prophesied in Isaiah chapter 66, verse 15. But that fire is going to start with Armageddon or the Third World War. 2 Peter 3, verse 12. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, Look for new heavens and a new earth wherein well of righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Notice it said, beloved. The beloved are the elect of the house of Israel that are going to repent and come back to this word and be established as the next rulers. That's why 2nd Edges 6 and 9 says Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. So this devil's world, his age, his dominion, his rulership, his season is going to pass away with thermonuclear destruction and the caveman shall be chased out of the world these red savage beasts shall be no more. 2 Peter 3, verse 12. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein for the righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. <clears throat> That's the elect. But the seed or the serpent seed, the Edomites, are going to be chased out of the world. Let's go to Job 18. Let's go to Job. Before we go to Job 18, let's go to Job 20 and 23. The book of Job, chapter 20, verse 20. One. We're going to go to Job chapter 20, verse 19. Because he have oppressed and have forsaken the poor. Because he have violently taken away a house which he built not. North America, a house which he built not. The children of Israel into his possession made a slave. A house which he built not. Colonizing the Holy Land. The Middle East, South Africa, New Guinea, Australia, a house which he built not, taken the sons of Judah, 
the sons of Israel, the sons of the living God, taken the tabernacles of David, a house which he built not into his possession, ruling over the stars of the Most High, the apple of his eye. This man has to pay for his crimes. Job 20, verse 19, because he hath oppressed and hath forsaken the poor, because he hath violently taken away a house which he built not, surely he shall not feel quietness in his belly. He shall not save of that which he desired. There shall none of his meat be left. Therefore shall no man look for his goods in the fullness of his sufficiency. He shall be in straits. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. So the working class, the labor force, the plowmen are going to overtake the, let's get that. So the laborers, the working class, are going to rise up against this devil. The Israelites, that's who it's describing. The Israelites are going to rise up against him. And we're scattered into all nations. So we look like all nations. Let's go to Amos 9. See? Amos 9, verse 9. For lo, I will command, and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is sifted in a sieve, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword which say but evil shall not overtake nor prevent us so only a lack an elect is going to be sifted preserved saved come to repentance but the two-third Israelites are going to fall by the sword Amos 9 verse 11 and that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof and I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. So this is the plowman, the laborers, the working force, the labor class, the labor force. That's who the wicked is going to overtake this devil. Esau Edom. Amos 9 verse 11. And that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord, that doeth this. So those heathen, it also starts with the Israelites that are scattered, but the rebels are going to be purged out. But it's the other nations. Amos 9, verse 12 that they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this. All nations are going to come under the authority of the tabernacle of David, the elect sons of Jacob, the governors, the 144,000, followed by the remnant. Amos 9, let's get into that working class, the working force. Amos 9, verse 13. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him that soweth seed, and the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. So that's what Job chapter 20 is talking about, that the wicked shall overtake him. Let's read it again, then we're going to go back to Job book of Amos chapter 9 verse 13 behold the days come saith the Lord that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes him that soweth seed and the mountain shall drop sweet wine and all the hills shall melt all these governments are going to collapse and be subjected or subdued under the tabernacle of David the sons of Jacob the Israelites Let's go back to that scripture. Job 20. Book of Job chapter 20. 
No, 18. One moment. Here we go. Job 20 and 22. The book of Job chapter 20, verse 22. So this is talking about the plowman will overtake the reaper. The book of Job chapter 20, verse 22. In the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him when he is about to fill his belly God shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he is eating. So the Israelites are going to raise up against Edom, the Edomites, and are going to execute vengeance upon them. Spoken of in Ezekiel chapter 25. And when neighbor against neighbor, kingdom against kingdom, nation against nation, then this is going to escalate or erupt into a final cataclysmic event. Nuclear destruction. And this wicked kingdom is going to be burned from out the face of the earth. But the elect are going to be caught up into the clouds to meet our Lord and Savior in the air with the chariots of the Lord. But this is talking about the plowmen, the Israelites, the poor man. The Israelites serving at the bottom. The plowman is going to overtake the reaper. Who's the international bankers? Who are the corporate giants? The global elites? The Fortune 500 company leaders? Who are the bankers? The landowners? The Edomites are. They are the reapers. They reap the benefits of everything. <coughs> Matter of fact, Let's go to James 5. So that's the rich man, Esau, Edom. Let's go to James chapter 5. The book of James chapter 5. See, we're going to read about it in the New Testament. The book of James chapter 5, verse 1. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. See that? So well, the plowman is going to overtake the reaper, the Edomites, Romans, the international bankers, the global elites, the Rothschilds, the Vanderbilts, the DuPonts, the Gettys, the Oppenheimers. Let's read it again. The Rockefellers. James chapter 5, verse 1. Go to now. Ye rich men, <coughs> James 5 and 1, go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered and the rust of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heat treasure together for the last days they have benefited off of rape robbery murder theft they stole the children of israel they stole the native american north american indians they stole the so-called black man the so-called native american so-called latino so-called mexicans and they built an entire kingdom of rulership on theft robbery that's why obadiah says will he not have stolen till he had enough let's go back to the top of this one james 5 verse 1 go to now ye rich men weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you your riches are corrupted 
and your garments are moth eaten. That means they are basting in iniquity. That's why their garments are moth eaten. They've built an entire kingdom on gross abominations, filthiness, mass murder, and bloodshed. James chapter 5, verse 3. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. So everything gotten by riches and deceit is going to be burned by nuclear fire. That's the judgment of the Lord. James chapter 5. Verse 4, Behold the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is kept of you back by fraud, crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Who's crying out right now? Crying aloud, sparing not. Who's crying about racism, discrimination, first fire, last hire? being marked as three-fifths of a man on the books. The Israelites are the sons of Jacob. That's who's crying. Who built America on free labor, worked for free for 400 years, and built the most wealthy nation on earth. Who did that? You tell me. The so-called Negroes, Native Americans, Mexicans, Latinos, the so-called Hispanics, America, was built on free labor for about 400 years and became the most wealthy nation on planet earth let's go back to that book of james chapter 5 verse 4 behold the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields which is of you kept back by fraud crying and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth. Say what? Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and have been one time. Ye have nourished your hearts as in the day of slaughter. So these global elites, O.T. man, Esau, Edom, is going to fall by the sword. O inhabitants of the dying, Romans, the seed of evildoers, the seed of the wicked, the serpent seed, are going to fall with great violence. Let's read it again. James 5, verse 4. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crying, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth, the Lord of armies. So he is the Lord of the hosts of heaven, the chariots of the Lord, the so-called UFOs. And also these missiles are part of his arsenal, a part of his army. So Sabaoth means armies. James 5, verse 5. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth. Say what? Ye have lived and pleasure on the earth and have been one ton you have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter you have condemned and killed the just and he does not resist you well, the just and the righteous seed the righteous branch are the Israelites James 5 verse 5 again Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and have been one time. Ye have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. Ye have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandmen waited for the precious fruit of the earth and have long patience for it until he received the early and latter rain going to receive the first fruits of his planting the elect of the house of Israel the trees of righteousness so 
people that are going to be judged. Esau, Edom has a right to remain silent. And everything you say and do will be held against you. You don't have a right to an attorney because the mediator, Yahweh Shai says, I am not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You have a warrant out for your arrest. Let's go to Exodus 21, verse 16. The book of Exodus chapter 21, verse 16. And he that stilleth a man and sell him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. Who stole us? Who stole the children of Israel? Who stole the so-called Negroes, Native Americans, and Latinos? Esau, Edom, the Romans, Edomites. They still got us, Lord. And they walking around with great pride with a Starbucks cup and a cream cheese bagel. They're not worried about what's coming out of this Bible. A Starbucks cup and a damn cream cheese bagel. Walking around with great pride. Let's read it again. Exodus 21, verse 16. And he that stilleth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. Let's go back to James 5. You're going to see this Bible is a true, true book. <coughs> James 5. Verse 5. He have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. He have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. He have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. See? So that law still stands. Whosoever still a man and sell him shall surely be put to death. And that's going to come in the form first brother against brother, civil wars, civil strife, neighbor against neighbor, race riots, Armageddon, mandating the MOTB, followed by what? The chariots of the Lord, chariots of fire. Let's go to Isaiah. That's why Isaiah says this, because that law, Exodus 21 and 16, is not done away with. <laughs> Exodus 21 and 16 is going to be executed during the day of the Lord. Let's prove that. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 21, excuse me, Isaiah 14 and 21, the book of Isaiah chapter 14 verse 21 prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers that they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities for i will rise up against them saith the lord of hosts and cut off from babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew saith the lord and I will also make it a possession for the bittern and pools of water, and I will sweep it with the besom of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. So that besom of destruction is a broom, a broom of fire, a broom of nuclear fire. See? So they're being prepared for the great wine press, the great wine fat. What is that? a massive slaughter. So they're being compared to grapes being crushed in the wine press. Let's go back to James 5. Back to James chapter 5 verse 5. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and have been one time ye have nourished your hearts as in the day of slaughter let's go back to isaiah 21 uh, 14 and 21 
book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 21. Prepare slaughter for his children on the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew, saith the Lord. And I will also make it a possession for the bittern and pools of water, and I will sweep it with the visa of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. So this place is going to become a monument of unclean creatures. Why? Because it's ran, owned, operated, and governed by unclean creatures. So it's going to become a desert wasteland for the bittern. So it's going to be a memorial for the uncleanliness and ungodliness for a place of devils. So this place is going to be occupied by unclean desert creatures. A wasteland after being swept with the besom of destruction. Most High says he's going to rise up against these cave beasts. He's going to rise up against you, saith the Lord. So if I was you, I would flee, O inhabitants of the dying. Let's find that. Flee. Turn back, O inhabitants of the Don. See if I can find that. Who is the Don and Teman? Edomites. The Temanites are the higher Eskalon. The Don are the lower level Edomites. See? Let's go to Jeremiah 49. Look at Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 7. Concerning Edom. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, is wisdom no more in Teman? Is counsel perish from the prudent? Is their wisdom banished? Flee ye, turn back, dwell deep, O inhabitants of Dedan, for I will bring the calamity of Esau upon him, the time that I will visit him. A calamity is coming upon you, you cave dragons, you cave beasts that have raped, robbed, and murdered that have massacred all the over the entire earth. India, rape, robbery, and murder. Bangladesh, rape, robbery, and murder. The Philippines, rape, robbery, and murder. Japan, rape, robbery, and murder. Korea, rape, robbery, and murder. Australia, rape, robbery, and murder. North America, rape, robbery, and murder. South Africa, rape, robbery, and murder. New Guinea, Let's read it again. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 49, verse 7. Concerning Edom, thus saith the Lord of hosts, is wisdom no more in Timon? Is counsel perish from the prudent? Is their wisdom vanished? Flee ye, turn back, dwell deep, O inhabitants of Dedan, for I will bring the calamity of Esau upon him. The time that I will visit him. There's going to be a visitation, cave beasts. There's going to be a visitation, you red dragons. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. Everywhere they go, they rape, rob, murder, steal, and kill. Colonization. Edomites, Romans. Jeremiah 49, verse 9. If grape gatherers come to thee, would they not leave some gleaning grapes? If thieves by night, they will destroy till they had enough. But I have made Esau bear. I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, and his brethren and his neighbors, and he is not. Be thy father's children, I will preserve them alive. And let thy widows trust in me. Caveman is going to be destroyed, slaughtered. And their wives are going to be widows. 
their children are going to be slaves, servants, and handmaids. They're going to go into captivity. The Bible says, As thou hast done, it shall be done unto you, and your reward shall return upon your own head. A great reward is coming to you, UK beasts. You red savage dragons. You have a warrant out for your arrest, you subhuman animals. Subhuman lion animals. Let's go to Obadiah. Book of Obadiah. These subhuman animals have a warrant out for their arrest and the time to pay is on its way. What crimes? What crimes? What did I do? What crimes? Look here, buddy. What crimes? Wait a minute, I'm, I'm white. I'm white. What crimes? Let's go to Obadiah, verse one. The book of Obadiah, the vision of Obadiah. Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom, we have heard a rumor from the Lord and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. That her is the daughter of Babylon, that's being ruled over or governed by Edomites. That's why when you read Psalms 137, verse 7 through 9, the Edomites are ruling in the daughter of Babylon. The vision of Obadiah. Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom, we have heard a rumor from the Lord and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. Everybody's beginning to hate the cavemen. They came out of the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. And in the ancient world, they were in Mount Seir, in the clefts of the rocks, in the caves of the earth. Cave means hole. Caucasian means cave dweller. Obadiah, verse 2. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? They're in a high status of rulership. They are ruling. They are the king of the hill. The second leg of the revised Roman Empire. Obadiah verse 4. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest amongst the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. So they establish a space force endeavoring to colonize space, space exploration. And they're also ruling over the stars of God. The children of Israel are referred to as the stars of God. And they're also venturing out into NASA. NASA means to ascend. NASA, ascend. What does NATO ascend or climb? NASA, see, there's stars above the heights of the Most High. That's why in Isaiah 14, he says, I will be like the Most High. How is he doing that? Trying to explore space. NASA means to climb or ascend. And he's ruling over the children of Israel. Obadiah, verse 2. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, Thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. 
if thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen till they had enough? If grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some cleaning grapes? All they do is rape, rob, murder, steal, and kill. And then says, what crimes? What crimes? We're just exploring. We explored America. No, you stole it. You stole it. <clears throat> if thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen till they had enough? If the grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? In the ancient world, when you harvested your grapes, you let the grapes that fell on the ground, you left them for the poor. The caveman eats the grapes, the grapevine, the grass under the grapes, the rack that you rack the grapes on, forgot what it's called, an overhang. This devil steals and kills and will not have stolen till he had enough. Most High is being facetious here. If thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen till they had enough? If the grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? Hell no, they ain't gonna leave nothing. You think a caveman is gonna leave something for the rest of us? You think the devil is gonna show acts of kindness and philanthropy? Hell no. Obadiah, verse six. How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. All these nations wander after the beast, and they all rely on his religious institution, his educational institutions, his political institutions, his economic, which is really the biggest part of that bread. All these nations are wandering after the beast. The great red dragon, Esau, Edom, Romans, Edomites, they're starting to turn on this devil. Once that man of sin is being revealed, the son of perdition, and they're dropping the U.S. petrodollar. So this place is going to economically collapse. So we ought to trust in the Lord, not in the devil. Obadiah verse 7 All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. There is no understanding in these subhuman cave beasts. And all these nations are going to rise up against him. Shall they not all take up a parable against thee? that shall rise up suddenly and bite thee. And it's gonna start with Judah. The Most High is gonna bend the bow of Judah. And he's gonna shoot the arrow of Ephraim. And he's gonna rise up against you, you tabernacles of Edom, you red dragons. The tabernacle of David is being raised up. And the bow of Judah is being stretched back. It's springing board, so to speak, to spring forth the other nations into action starting with the remainder of the other tribes of Israel, of the house of David. How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. Shall I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the mount of Esau? And thy mighty men, O Timan, shall be dismayed till the end that every one out of the mount of Esau 
may be cut off by slaughter. All these KBs are going to be cut off by slaughter. What crimes? What did I do? What crimes? Stop lying, devil. Let's go to Ezekiel 25. What crimes? What crimes? Go to the book of Ezekiel. I'm going to go to Zephaniah first. Zechariah 9. The book of Zechariah, chapter 9. Verse 11. The book of Zechariah, chapter 9, verse 11. <clears throat> Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, the king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly riding upon an ass and upon a coat, the foal of an ass. So Yahweh Shai is going to raise up the tabernacle of David. He's coming back. Our salvation is through the right arm, through the right hand of the Most High Yahweh. He came back before. He's coming again. So he, this actually happened, by the way, when he was on the earth as Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach. This actually took place, but he's coming back as well. Future prophecy. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 12. Go to verse 11. As for thee also, by the blood of the covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water. What's that? The place of dryness, the desolate wilderness, the place of our captivity. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 11. As for thee, also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit, wherein is no water. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. When I have bent Judah for me, fill the bow with Ephraim, and raise up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece and make thee as the sword of a mighty man. And the Lord shall be seen over them, and his arrow shall go forth as the lightning, and the Lord God shall blow the trumpet, and shall go with whirlwinds of the south. The chariots of fire, the chariots of the Lord, those are the whirlwinds that he's coming back with. So Judah is being raised up, followed by the rest of the tabernacle of David by Yahweh Shai. Zechariah 9, verse 13. When I have bent Judah for me, filled the bow with Ephraim, and raised up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece, and made thee as the sword of a mighty man. These are Edomites talking about old Greece. They stole those original lands of Greece, which were originally inhabited by sons of Japheth. But right now, they're occupied by Edomites that stole that land. Zechariah 9, verse 14. And the Lord shall be seen over them, and his arrow shall go forth as the lightning, and the Lord God shall blow the trumpet and shall go with whirlwinds of the south. So the ground force is going to be the mighty men of the sons of Jacob. And the air power, the air force, are going to be the chariots of the Lord, the so-called UFOs. This is going to be a major, multi-pronged, multi-faceted, strategic attack by the mighty men of King David. King David, Yahweh Shai. The sons of Jacob are going to be raised up as in the days of old, like Solomon, like Samson, like King David. Zechariah 9, 
verse 15. The Lord of hosts shall defend them, and they shall devour. Say what? And they shall devour. Say what? And they shall devour and subdue with sling stones, and they shall drink and make a noise as through wine, and they shall be filled like bowls and as the corners of the altar. We're going to be turning it up in the kingdom. What sling stones? The mighty men of Jacob are going to be raised up to have spiritual power become extraterrestrials in a moment in the twinkling of an eye we shall be changed and we shall be like him and we shall be and see him as he is we're going to be like gods and be as king david zechariah chapter 9 verse 15 the Lord of hosts shall defend them, and they shall devour, and subdue with sling stones, and they shall drink, and make a noise as through wine, and they shall be filled like bowls, and as the corners of the altar. And the Lord, their God, shall save them in that day as the flock of his people, for they shall be as the stones of a crown, lifted up as an incense upon his land. Or how great is his goodness and how great is his beauty corn shall make the young men cheerful and new wine the maids so this is why the bible says esau is the end of the world jacob is the beginning of it that follow so when the sons of Jacob are raised up, it's going to be a glorious kingdom. And we're going to be raised up with supernatural abilities. So we, we were given the birthright and the blessing. So that comes with eternal kingdom of rulership and dominion. An eternal kingdom of excellency, a glorious kingdom. So the world to come is going to be a supernatural world right here on earth. So when the Bible is talking about the kingdom of rulership, it's talking about here on earth. It's not talking about floating away on the cloud somewhere. That's why it says Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow. So that world is a season an age or eon of rulership and dominion and that eternal kingdom that's coming or promised that's coming next and promised to the sons of Jacob is going to last forever so hopefully this has been edifying all praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai by Hashem sorry I didn't get to the comment board today but thank you for posting the scriptures Helping to edify the body and feed the sheep. And blessings to you beloved ladies of the hopeful elect of the house of Israel and of the remnant. Blessings to you brothers of the hopeful elect of the tabernacle of David. All praises to you. How about Shem Yahabashai? By Shem Rekakadash. Double honors and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Much respect and honor to the brothers doing the work and truth and sincerity and our beloved sisters following this truth and faith Kwame Sharala and Abad Babao DTA Abad Babao we got next Lord willing Barakatham Shalom